Jim Parm is a partner in Inc. CEO project and graduated from Michigan Tech in 1981 with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. He's had a distinguished career leading international technology companies. He has been president of Inmarset Solutions and president and CEO of Stratos, where he took it from a regionally focused company to a global leader in satellite services. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce you to you, Jim Parm. Welcome home, Jim. Thank you, Glenn, and thank you to the university's faculty and administration for the opportunity to be here today. Graduates, I'm thrilled to be here to celebrate this special day and your very important accomplishments. It's always a, a privilege to come back to Houghton. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to watch Tech grow and prosper under Glenn's leadership. We are indebted to Glenn for everything that he has done for this university. But Glenn, I think the biggest testament to your legacy at Tech is all of the outstanding graduates, including those that sit before you today. You have enriched their lives in ways that they may not even completely understand. And by doing so, you've strengthened our country's competitiveness, furthered future technological advances, and importantly, developed the next generation of leaders that we so desperately need. Thank you, Glenn. When I was sitting where you are a little over 35 years ago, I never would have imagined that I'd be here speaking with you today. I was just an average kid from a small town near Grand Rapids, Michigan, who liked sports, the outdoors, and was a pretty good student. I came to Tech to study electrical engineering, trying to become the first person in my family to get a college degree. Arriving here and meeting hundreds of students I realized that most of them had graduated well above me in their high school class. These were really smart kids. I was going to have to work my tail off just to stay here. And then there was freshman calculus. I landed in Professor Vichich's class. His booming voice and high expectations were intimidating to say the least. And then one day he called me out. Professor Vichich was showing us how to solve a complex equation on the blackboard. This was back in the days when we had blackboards. And he, after covering what seemed to be the entire board with the equation, he turned to the class, looked me straight in the eye, and drew a big circle around half the board and said, Parm, does this, drawing a big circle on over half the board, equal this, drawing a big circle around the other half of the board? I didn't know what to say. But I figured I had a 50-50 chance, so in my most confident voice, I said, no. <laughs> then he looked at me through those bushy eyebrows, and in even a louder voice said, does this equal this? This time without nearly as much confidence, I said, no. <laughs> he looked me straight in the eye and said, Parm, did you take Trig or did Trig take you? That memory still haunts me to this day. <laughs> but somehow I made it. And I grew so much in the process. I credit Michigan Tech and my experiences here for much of my professional career. Sure, it was here that I got the education and that all-important diploma that I needed to begin my career. But even more important than that, it was here where I developed the analytical and problem-solving skills I didn't even know I had. It was here that tested my tenacity, work ethic, and desire to achieve my goals. And it was here that I gained the confidence to take on interesting work challenges. Challenges that became successes and, yes, failures. Challenges that made me a better person. 
As much as tech meant to my career, it meant even more to me in my personal life. In addition to the so many friends that I met here, I also met Jean, a computer science major who rescued me my senior year. And she's with us here today. When I was too broke to, to even buy groceries, she, let alone pay for a date, she fed me macaroni and cheese, tuna and peas. You should try it sometime. Not, not really. And even paid for a weekly outing to the library bar for pizza and beer. Jean has been my rock and the center of our family ever since. Thank you, dear. I know all of you have had equally enriching and hopefully less haunting experiences here at Tech, which brings us to this celebration. First of all, parents, you must be so proud. It was a little over a year ago when I was sitting where you are watching my son cross a stage like this one. It was a moving experience for me, and not just because the tuition payments ended, although I admit that did also bring a small tear to my eye. But I was watching my son grow up, become independent, and do his own thing. As parents, we work hard to raise self-sufficient, motivated, well-grounded, and happy individuals. You should be proud of what you've done to raise such incredible young adults. All those years of encouraging, coaching, and yes, sometimes even prodding have paid off. You have done more than anyone else to prepare them for their life ahead. Graduates, this would be a great time to show your appreciation to your parents, family, and friends that were so instrumental in getting you to this point. Let's stand up, show the love, and give them the recognition they deserve. deserved. Graduates, congratulations. You have made it. Not only are you college graduates, something only about a third of Americans accomplish, you are tech graduates. This is a unique place and it takes tremendous talent, commitment, and perseverance to accomplish what you have done. You spent long nights studying when you could have been out having fun with friends. You dedicated endless hours perfecting your projects under tight deadlines. You even fought through blizzards to make it to class, just to say you never missed one. Okay, that may be a little bit of an exaggeration for the sake of your parents here, but you've worked hard. And you should be proud of your accomplishments. Now it's time to celebrate. This is one of those big moments in life. Take the time to reflect on your experiences here, the family and friends that supported you, the lifelong friends you've made here, and the many lessons that you take away from your time at Tech. The next stage of your journey begins here, much like mine did. It will no doubt be different than mine or anyone else's. It will be unique to you, and it will be what you make it. You enter a world that is very different than the one I entered some 35 years ago. We are embarking on an era of self-driving cars, electric aircraft, and remarkable artificial intelligence that makes most of us who are over 50 feel like that old cartoon show, The Jetsons, is coming alive. It seems like every part of our lives is changing. Ubiquitous Wi-Fi, virtual reality, and genetic engineering are just a few of the many developments that will change our lives. If you think the rate of change is accelerating, you are right. You'll see more change in the next 10 years than I experienced in the last 35. So you may wonder if all that change makes your newly minted education irrelevant or out of date. Just the opposite. Your education is foundational. Just as innovation builds on previous generations of innovation, so does knowledge and skill. What this change does mean, however, is that you must grow and evolve faster than ever certainly much faster than my generation. Your education doesn't end here at Tech. In many respects, it just begins here. 
Whether it's formal education, self-study, self or on-the-job experiences, it is critical that you invest in your own development. Don't just do your job, invest in your career. Seek out opportunities to broaden your skills. Take on that work assignment that pushes you out of your comfort zone and, and into new areas. Invest in your own development. You are your most valuable asset, and the rapid pace of change necessitates a lifelong of learning. These technological developments also require your leadership. The moral and ethical dilemmas that we as a society will face in the coming decade are yours to solve. Technology doesn't control itself, humans control it. Whether it's determining the path of a self-driving car during a pending collision or how gene editing will be used to alter lives, you will make the decisions that affect us all. We as a society need you to stay centered. Remember where you came from. Remember what is important. Remember that sense of decency and fairness that is too often lost. Many of you will be taking on your first truly professional role after this graduation, and for the rest, that day will come soon following graduate school. As you take on your new role, bring your talents and use them. We need your talents. You are uniquely able to make a difference in your new organization. Find out how and do it. You're not expected to enter your profession, profession with all of the answers, but you are a fast learner and you bring a fresh perspective that every organization needs. And bring your leadership. You may not enter the organization in a formal position of leadership, but you always have the opportunity to lead. Lead from wherever you sit. You will have opportunities to change your organization, make that a positive change. My most important advice for all of you that are early in your journey in life is to learn to stay physically, mentally, and spiritually balanced. It is far too easy to let the urgent overtake the important in life. Whether you're challenged with managing work pressures, raising children, family commitments, community commitments, or all of the above, remember that you can't take care of others if you don't take care of yourself. Take the time to prepare yourself, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Take the time to invest in your important relationships. They are, in the long run, more important than the urgent task at hand. Take the time to touch the people around you. Many have helped you get to this wonderful place in life. Now you have the opportunity and the responsibility to help others. Give back, and you'll receive a priceless reward, the joy of making a difference. Life is a journey, and we're all excited to see you take your next step in that journey. You've accomplished so much already, and we're inspired by you, your spirit, your enthusiasm, and your heart. No one knows the exact path that your journey will take, but the same hard work, dedication, and leadership that got you to this point will take you far. Remember to invest in yourself, stay balanced, and most of all, through the good times and bad, enjoy the journey. Congratulations and God bless. We're pleased to recognize Jim for his many accomplishments, and while he's been extremely successful in leading international technology companies, he's remained supportive of Michigan Tech University, and I think his remarks this morning show the love he has not only for the institution, but for all of you. Jim is a member of the Michigan Tech's President's Advancement Council, the Electrical and Computer Energy, uh, Engineering Academy. And he and his wife, Jean, who is a 1982 graduate of Michigan Tech with a degree in computer science, established the Jim and Jean Parm Endowed Scholarship. And we're grateful for Jim's leadership and contributions, as well as his support for Michigan Tech through the years. We salute him and award him with an honorary Doctor of Philosophy degree. Jim.
thank you for that. <laughs> Say another word. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I am truly honored. Uh, you know, for for Jean and I, Michigan Tech has had such a special place in our lives, which makes this award even more special to us. So thank you very much.